Let me be honest with you, I don't like spending too much time on the computer editing photos. My name is Steph and I run the travel photography website Mel365 and in this video I'm gonna tell you my top 10 dark table keyboard shortcuts that will help you immensely during the editing phase but also they will speed up a lot your workflow in dark table. Let's get into it. <music> And here I am on the interface of Darktable. I just want to stress out that these shortcuts help me immensely in my workflow, but everybody's workflow is different. And if you feel I left out any shortcut that is very, very useful, please leave a comment because I will add that in another video. But let's jump straight away to the first shortcut, which is the sticky preview with focus detection or control alt W. So if I go on this photo, for example, Control Alt W, and what you have is a very sticky preview, so you can go back and forward to all of the other photos, and you have red squares that identify the area of the photo which is in focus. It's not always 100%, but most of the time it's correct, and I'll show you another example where it didn't work very well. Let's get to this chicken, and you see that correctly it says that the focusing area here on the chicken, but it's also on the background, which is not. There is another similar shortcut which is Ctrl Shift F which toggle focus picking on and off and I talk more actually in the post that I've written on my website and I will leave a link to the post into the video description. Another dark table keyboard shortcut is the letter X and when you digit the letter X what is going to happen is that you change from the photo grid view with the bottom panel having the timeline of your photos to a view where you have a film strip on the bottom and the uh, photos here in the center and you can also go a little bit wider in, as a number of photos so, or you can go with a single photo here which I quite like when I go through the photos but let's jump straight away to the control mouse scroll and what allows you is to increase the number of the photos per row and if this is something you can uh, actually do here also below but just takes more time and it's not that precise as when you do it with the mouse scroll and I jump straight away to the tab shortcut and that allows me to see the photo without all of the panels or around which somehow are distracting or thought very useful of course so if I do tab I go full screen and I can see my photo without any disruption I tab again and I go back to my format you can do that in the dark room as well and in the dark room you have also another option which is the W and if you keep the W key pressed you will have the photo full screen and once you leave a double key it goes back with the four panels on the sides and top and bottom. I jump now to the history stack copy and paste and this is very good when you want to copy and paste the editing that you have done on one photo to the next which is pretty similar. Now let's assume for example I want to do some editing to this photo and uh, just for the sake of this video I apply the tropical beach style to this photo and uh, let's assume I've done all of the editing on this photo and I like it and I want to apply it on this photo. What I do I go on the first photo, Ctrl C, I go on the destination photo and Ctrl V and the job is done. If you have already worked with the Lightroom, basically this is the synchronized button then. But there is a small difference is that when you paste, you paste all of the adjustments that you have done with Ctrl V. However, if you use Ctrl Shift V, what's going to happen is going to open a window with all of the modules that have been applied and you can select what actually you want to paste into the destination photo. Now, let's assume you want actually to try a different way to edit this photo and what you want to do in that case is to create a duplicate a virtual copy of this photo and to do that you click on the photo Control shift d and here it is a virtual copy of the photo and as you notice you don't get a virtual copy with all of the editing but of the original photo i want to stress that you create actually a second sidecar file which is an xmp file where you store the editing for the second virtual photo the original raw file of the photo so it could be also jpeg or any other format is still only one so you just duplicate the xmp file some of these dark table keyboard shortcuts may work only in the light table view others may work only in the dark room view and others again can work in both views but if you go in the description of the videos i always highlight where do they work and i jump now to the dark room for this photo and now let's assume we want to 
zoom into the letters here to see if they are on focus. You have different ways to do it, but the quickest for me is just to click on the middle mouse um, wheel and you are 100% into the photo. If you do another click, you are 200% and with the third click, you go back to the original format. As you may have noticed, all of these photos are from Cuba, a fantastic country. If you are into photography, you will be inspired every single day. And now let's assume for this photo, I want to actually bright up only this part of the car. What I can do, I go into the basic adjustments and um, I may want to expose a little bit that car. In order to do that, I have to go to the draw mask and select the brush here. And you see that the brush, you can define the opacity and the hardness. And if you click on the shift and the scroll button of your mouse, you can define how hard is gonna be the edge on that brush. So the area, that goes from max opacity to no opacity. And if you do control scroll, you define instead the opacity. And you can see that on both the central part, the whitish that becomes even more, or you can see that also on top of a photo with a percentage value. So let me do that. And it's all done. I can show you before and after. I am back to the original photo and uh, let's assume we want actually to bright up or not only the part of the car but also the walls here and maybe the reflection down there. What you can do is to go and pick the brush every time or if you digit control and click on the brush, you're gonna keep the brush for as long as you want to do the change. So for example, I do a little bit here on the cars and then I jump over here on the reflection and then finally I do also the walls here. And it's all done, I can show you before and after. And this was done very quickly, so normally I would spend more time and go down to the details and maybe zooming in as well. And here I am to the last dot table, a keyboard shortcut, which is the letter H. And when you digit that, you have a help on all of the shortcuts that you can use. If you want, you can also personalize and customize all of the shortcuts. And you can do that if you click on the gear wheel here on the top right, you go into the preferences and then shortcuts. And for example, we go into the global, you can change the print view for example I go here I double click on the P and I put maybe Ctrl shift L another thing that you can do you can also assign a new shortcut for example to styles if I apply quite often a style which is beach 70s I double click here and I do for example Ctrl shift L and every time I do Ctrl shift L it's gonna apply this uh, style and this is it with this video please leave a comment with your favorite shortcut and if you enjoy the video put a like i really appreciate that subscribe to the channel and tick that little bell to get a notification next time i post a new video a big ciao ciao from melbourne and i see you next time no I'm